This may look far-fetched, but this look to the future may not be quite so far away. Looking back to 10 years ago, you would never have guessed that the technology we have today would be so affordable, small and important in our everyday lives. The UK's National Physical Laboratory is one of the world's foremost research centres working on science we all take for granted. These developments have impacted hugely upon our past and present and they're working on innovations that will change the future. This is far from your conventional academic ivory tower. It was opened in 1902 with the express intention of bringing scientific knowledge to bear practically upon our everyday industrial and commercial lives. They've taken part in the very early development of aircraft, tested the bouncing bomb, weighed the Concorde, helped lay the foundations of the internet, and even fixed Big Ben. And on top of all of this, the NPL is the home to the UK's National Measurement Institute, setting the standard for measurements such as length, time, mass, even tones of colour for all of the United Kingdom. All in all, it's a very important place. From stunning art, like this electron dream made from a beam of high-speed electrons, to important history, like these scales, just one of the NPR's original means of measurement, there is no end to the unique and fascinating things hidden here. This is the reverb chamber. The suspended plates increase the surface area of the room, allowing sound to reflect, meaning that any noise you make echoes for much longer than it should. When I pop this balloon, the bang will last for 12 seconds. On the other hand, this chamber is designed to limit reverb. The foam spikes on the walls actively absorb sound, so if I pop this balloon, you can barely hear it. But even with all the incredible technology here, the MPL relies on the brilliant scientific minds of its teams of engineers and researchers. On this cold wintry day it might not look like much, but I'm now standing next to probably the second most famous apple tree in the world, after that one in the Bible. This tree was grown here from a cutting taken from the apple tree at Isaac Newton's mother's house, the legend being that it was seeing an apple fall that provoked him to ponder on gravitation. And one of the most pioneering projects here at the MPL came from something just as simple, a pencil and a piece of sellotape. You see, despite being made of the same stuff as diamond, graphite, like in this pencil, is a very weak material. It's made of a series of vertically stacked, honeycombed carbon layers, each less than a millionth of a millimetre in thickness. If you can separate one of those layers from the rest of them, its properties change entirely. The bonds across a single layer are incredibly strong, meaning this sheet of graphene is really very, very tough. It's about 200 times stronger than steel. At the same time, it doesn't become brittle like other strong substances can do, and remains almost transparent. And most interestingly, it has some incredibly unique electrical and thermal properties. All of this means the range of application could be massive, anything from ultra-thin touchscreen displays to super-efficient microcircuitry. The experts at the MPL have been working with this newly discovered material, learning more about its properties and how it may be used in the future. Graphene has many spectacular properties which were discovered in a very short time. Uh, for example, uh, it is uh, the strongest material on Earth, uh, but the properties that we are most interested in are uh, those related to uh, the, the uh, electronics. And here at the National Physical Laboratory we mainly focus on the electrical properties of graphene. So we study how, how the electrons behave, um, how mobile they are, and what they do in the magnetic field. The MPL makes use of an array of technology to test graphene, including this supercooled electromagnet, which allows the MPL to define new measurement standards for electrical resistance. One of the main advantages which we've achieved in the, in the last year is to make really large areas of this one atomic layer of graphene. So before that people could only make really small flakes, which are only a few uh, microns in, uh, in diameter. What people did was basically to uh, peel off individual layers of uh, uh, carbon from uh, graphite and they did it by using scotch tape which was uh, incredibly smart but uh, uh, also painstaking. But to make electronics out of it you really need 
a much larger area of material. And so what we've been doing over the last year is to actually grow graphene. One of the most successful methods of graphene production is with the so-called silicon carbide cake method. The layers of silicon carbide you can see are heated, forming a single layer of carbon atoms on top, which is graphene. So if you imagine uh, a staircase covered with a carpet, this is what you see. So what you see is uh, graphene, which is the carpet, but uh, it follows the profile of the steps, which is the silicon carbide it has, uh, graphene has grown from. The scale of the uh, graphene samples used to be a few microns in diameter, whereas now we can make them up to half a centimeter. So it's like a thousand times bigger in size. So it's really the device which we've made at the moment is the, the size of a, uh, a penny coin. The MPL are always advancing and pushing the boundaries. If the same turns out to be true for graphene, what could its potential future applications be for future technologies? Uh, from an industry point of view, the applications are in uh, computing. Uh, a lot of the uh, bigger industries like Intel and IBM are looking towards technologies which could re replace their silicon technology. At the moment, every, every chip in every laptop and computer is based on silicon. And they're making it smaller and smaller every, every year. And at some stage, they're going to run out of how small they can make it. It's what people call the end of Moore's law. We are never satisfied with the uh, uh, type of electronics we have. Uh, we want uh, it to be faster. We want it to be uh, uh, more efficient, to consume less energy. And so now they're looking at materials which could replace silicon as the next um, uh, transistor. And graphene is a, is a very strong candidate. So, what next? Graphene has a unique atomic structure, which means it has some truly incredible electrical, thermal and mechanical properties. The potential for it to become the super material of the future is huge. However, we're still at the very early experimental and theoretical stages. There's still a lot of work to be done by scientists, such as those at the MPL. But, if its promise can be realised, who can dream what technology might look like in another 10 years? One of the, one of the weirdest suggestions of people uh, wanted to do with, uh, with carbon atoms is, uh, is make a space elevator. So you make a, a sort of uh, a spiral structure out of rolled up graphene or carbon nanotubes uh, all the way out in, into space onto a satellite and you, you, you basically tether the satellite to the earth uh, on, a, on, a, on a graphene cable. And you can do that because it's so strong and so light. So a normal metal cable would break under its own weight, but graphene wouldn't. And so you could have a lift going up and down this cable into space. I think that's one of the, the weirder ones.